Japanese publishers have been on a bit of a downslide recently, with most of the market residing in the North American and European regions to get their fair share of the profits they have been looking at the potential of the Western market. In many cases, these publishers are taking both the easy and the hard way out third and first person shooters. Aside from Vanquish, there really hasn't been a standout Japanese shooter. RPG giant Square Enix, along with Kirby Epic Yarn developer Feel Plus, has taken a chance to appeal to the Western market with Mindjack. Whoever they are, these guys are serious. Neutralizing the soldier who was in contact with Rebecca. After the mission was completed, Jim was going to return Rebecca to the FIA. But the corporation Nerxus had other plans, launching an all-out assault on... Are you confused? This is exactly how starting Mindjack feels. Suddenly you're thrown into the title given no explanation of who, what, when, where, or why. You might as well have just picked up someone's save file and started playing. It is never cl exactly clear what is going on, and while there are some plot points you can follow, they all feel tarnished by the lack of a solid foundation. What the hell's going on? All I know is someone wants us dead. Us? You? You, me, us, think they give a damn? This was supposed to be an easy mission! All of this is wrapped up with an ending filled with huge plot gaps, leaving most of the story unexplained. The voice acting and dialogue don't help the situation either. It just misses the so bad it's good mark, instead making a sloppy attempt at being entertaining with some running gags and dry jokes thrown back and forth. Great, let's go. God damn it! Unlike the story, Mindjack actually eases you into the gameplay. Once you get the hang of the controls, you'll realize something. Mindjack plays like every other shoot on the market, for the most part. But something always feels a little off. The way you move, the way you aim, the way you want to do anything has a small tweak to it that makes it feel unresponsive or just plain confusing. Taking cover is a matter of a press of a button, but you always seem to magnetize towards the object or surface you didn't want to lock onto. When you do get behind cover, it is difficult to tell exactly what is or isn't in your line of sight. Often you'll find yourself peeking around a corner to take shots, only to have every bullet in your clip go straight into the wall beside you. An evasive roll is mapped to the same button as sticking to cover, so if you want to roll out of the way, You'll often stick to an object, leaving you vulnerable. And if a small object is in your way, you can't roll past it, essentially making you roll in place. Melee combat makes little sense at all. Every successful melee attack has a short cinematic attack sequence, but you'll find yourself taking more bullets than it's worth. It can take up to four or five attempts to even initiate one. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Mindjack. Entire experience feels average, if not worse, thanks to all the small details that seem to plague every single element of gameplay. Mindjack does have a couple of catches, though. A girl likes to think she's unique, Corbin. So you want to take another shot at that? You flirting with me, Vice? The first of which being the ability to overtake the minds of not only enemies, but robots, civilians, and occasionally gorillas. How you mindjack these units depend on their type. Civilians can be possessed at any time along with idle robots. But if it is an enemy soldier or active robot, you basically play Pokemon with bullets, shooting them until they have a certain amount of health left. Once they are vulnerable to mind jacking, you make them into your mind slave, essentially converting them to your side. Once in the slave state, the player can mind jack the unit. If you choose not to, the AI will take over, fighting alongside you. Using this ability, you can create your own personal armies, as well as easily flank enemy units. Unfortunately, the level design doesn't exactly push this aspect until much later in the title. Most encounters are simple square rooms with civilians scattered about. The other catch to Mindjack is that there's no real single player mode. The entire game takes place in the multiplayer environment. Players play through campaign mode, which is what would essentially be the single player mode. Other players have the choice to join in your single player campaign through an online matchmaking system. They can either assist or oppose you. These players can mindjack all, all the characters but the main characters, although any 
one who joins to assist the campaign player can only possess mind enslaved enemies. With one unit consistently available for ally players, this can lead to some downtime, so players just have to sit around waiting for a unit to mind jack. This same problem can affect the opposing side as well, but it's much rarer due to the large amount of enemy units they can freely possess. Each room acts as a multiplayer map. Usually these encounters happen in single rooms, and once clear of enemy soldiers, character stats and mind jack units reset, leaving only the player in control of a character. Hallways tend to act as transition points between these encounters, so most battles take place in single wide open areas. There are no surprises as each battle has a clear beginning and end, anything in between is entirely safe. Because of this, massive amount of enemies can be thrown at the player at once, and with the ability to essentially mind slave an army, things can get a bit hectic, especially with 3 on 3 online gameplay where players are trying to flank each other with units. These moments can come with heavy slowdown, but it is worth it as it is the, probably the highlight of Mindjack. Although this system is far from perfect, if the allied side wins, players continue through the campaign. But if the opposing team wins, the person is forced to play through that level again, along with everyone else in the game. This means that if the opposing side wins, everyone is penalized, and at the end of the day, no matter which side you're on, you feel terrible. The opposing side is keeping the allied side from progressing further in the title, and the allied side isn't good enough to push through, keeping everyone on the same stage. In most cases, everyone but the main player leaves the game. You're welcome to turn online mode off in the campaign, but then that just takes the magic out of mind, Jack. There's more than just you two, right? Just us two's a lot. I could go on forever about little complaints of mo for Mindjack, but the matter of fact is that Mindjack just dragged its feet on the floor in terms of a traditional third-person shooter experience. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. The title provides something that other shooters on the market haven't offered with its unique online mechanics. But if you're expecting a third-person shooter that rivals that of Gears of War, Mindjack isn't appealing at all. Really, the main draw of Mindjack is the ability to play single player online. If you dig what Demon Souls had to offer, you might want to check Mindjack out. It probably would be better worth a rent than a purchase. But if you're looking for something like Gears of War, Call of Duty, you know, traditional shooters, stay far, far away from Mindjack.